During the latter and concluding stages of World War II, several notable Nazis, Nazi supporters, and military personnel committed suicide. These suicides included 8 out of the 41 NSDAP regional leaders who served in office between 1926 and 1945, as did 7 out of the 47 higher ranking SSS and police officials, 53 out of the 554 army generals, 14 out of the 98 Luftwaffe generals, 11 out of the 53 Kriegsmarine admirals, and an undetermined number of junior officials. But these numbers pale in comparison to the more notable suicides that occurred in the latter and concluding stages of World War II. Of course, the most notable among these Nazi suicides is obviously Adolf Hitler, leader of the Nazi party during the Third Reich, Chancellor of Germany, and Führer. On the 30th of April 1945, a long recently married longtime lover Eva Braun, and within the Führer bunker in Berlin, Hitler committed suicide by gunshot to avoid capture by the Soviet Red Army. And of course, alongside Hitler, there were many other notable Nazi suicides, these including Heinrich Himmler, Reichsführer of the Schutzstaffel, otherwise known as the SS, and the main architect of the Holocaust. Himmler committed suicide by biting down on a cyanide capsule on the 23rd of May 1945 while in British custody. Hermann Göring, Commander-in-Chief of the Luftwaffe and President of the Reichstag. Göring committed suicide by cyanide poisoning hours before his execution in the Nuremberg Trials on the 15th of October 1946. And last but not least, Joseph Goebbels, Chief Propagandist of the Nazi Party and Reich Minister of Propaganda. Goebbels committed suicide on the 1st of May 1945 alongside his wife and six children with cyanide a day after Hitler committed suicide. But with all these Nazi leaders knocking themselves off and ensuring themselves a calm and peaceful death, it raises the simple question, why did Nazi leaders kill themselves? First of all, remember what happened to Italian fascist dictator Benito Mussolini? Mussolini led his nation into the Second World War in 1940, alongside Nazi Germany, but his military endeavours quickly met with disaster. He was in charge of a German puppet state in Northern Italy by the fall of 1943, but he had to contend with the Allied push from the south as well as a fierce internal battle with Italian partisans. Mussolini's position grew precarious in April 1945, when the Allies overcame the final German defences in northern Italy, and the partisan movement spread throughout the cities within Italy. Mussolini left his headquarters in Milan on April 25th, and fled towards the Swiss border. On April 27th, local partisans in the town of Dongo on Lake Como seized him and his mistress, Clara Petacci. The next afternoon, two days before Adolf Hitler killed himself, Mussolini and Petacci were put to death. Mussolini and Petacci's bodies were transported to Milan and dumped in the Piacale Loreto, a suburban square where a sizable mob of enraged onlookers violently assaulted and mocked them. Then, above a gas station in the same plaza, they were hanged upside down from a metal girder. As a staunch ally of both the Nazis and fascism, Mussolini's death by the hands of his own people would have more than certainly have reached the ears of Adolf Hitler and his fellow Nazi leaders. Coupled with this, there is the chance of capture and the likelihood of retaliation from the Allies, particularly the Soviets, who the Nazis knew desired ruthless vengeance. Eastern Europeans, who were Slavic peoples, were dehumanised in the view of the Nazis. Together with this, Eastern Europe was considered a region to colonise because of its abundant agricultural resources and comparatively low level of industrial development which gave rise to the Nazi concept of Lebensraum. Hence, in contrast to the Western Front, the fight on the Eastern Front was a war of extermination, mass deportation, Germanization, enslavement, and genocide. And of course, we can't forget Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union by Nazi Germany in 1941, with the aim being the conquering of the Soviet Union, the seizing of its resources, and the elimination of the perceived threat of Soviet communism. The invasion was the ultimate backstab by Hitler towards Stalin, and alongside the war on the Eastern Front, it instilled a temperament within the Soviet people that could only be quelled by the spilling of Nazi blood. This is also the reason why, in the last stages of World War II, Nazi units and individual troops adopted the tactic of moving westward and turning themselves into the Western Allies, since they were aware of the fact that doing so would result in a far better ending in comparison to surrendering in the other direction. German prisoners and American camps, for instance, responded to letters by writing about how boring life was and how all they did was perform manual farm work. You can see why that might be better when compared to the horrifying tales of Soviet gulags. Hitler himself also had his reasons, a notable one being within his political testament and his private will, signed in the Führer bunker on the 29th of April 1945, the day before he committed suicide. Quote, I should like, by remaining in this town, to share my fate with those, 
the millions of others who have also taken upon themselves to do so. Moreover, I do not wish to fall into the hands of an enemy who requires a new spectacle organised by the Jews for the amusement of their hysterical masses. But if you ask me, personally, more than anything, I think they killed themselves because many of them had an all or nothing mentality and couldn't imagine living in a society that didn't accept their views, in a society in which they were seen as having failed. This is why I think they did it, not just because they feared being tortured and humiliated before being executed by the victorious enemies. Hitler, for instance, refused the vice chancellorship when it was offered to him as a political ruse in late 1932, insisting instead on the full chancellorship while secretly acknowledging that it was a huge bet and that if it failed, he may commit suicide. Lastly, it's also important to remember that the majority of Nazi leaders were from modest backgrounds and had attained power and wealth far beyond their wildest dreams. As a result, for many of them, the loss of prominence that would have come with defeat was literally unimaginable to them and they preferred to die rather than go through it. This has been made Jack and I love you all and if you're thinking of doing it, please don't because well, you still have to watch all my videos.